Hello, my name is Mr. Asprey, and these are my top 10 tips for applied maths, stats, and mechanics. Coming in clutch just before paper free. Let's get it. I've done a top 10 tips for pure. You can watch that here. My final tip was stay fresh, stay motivated, and that is going to be my first tip for applied maths paper free. Stay fresh, stay motivated. You may have done fantastically well on paper one and two and think that your A or your A star is in the bag, but you're going to need stats and mechanics and so make sure you stay motivated. You may have found paper one and two really tricky and you didn't get the grade or the marks that you were hoping for, but don't worry, you can turn it around with a really strong performance in paper three. So give it your all, make sure that you stick to your routines with revision, stay off the energy drinks and eat healthy, drink water and go for a run, get some exercise. You're so close to the summer now, make sure you give it your all for that final paper and then you can have a fantastic summer and relax. Tip number two, and we are talking hypothesis tests. Now I've done a little bit of research into past Edexcel papers and there are three hypothesis tests that come up and these are the three that you need to know. Correlation, normal, and binomial. Correlation has come up over the last five years. Normal, four out of five, binomial just once. So I'm gonna focus on normal and correlation. Okay, here I've got an example of a hypothesis testing using normal distribution. I start off by defining my hypotheses. We have mu is equal to 18 is the null hypothesis, and mu is greater than 18 is the alternate. And that's because in the question it says that Alice believes that the lifetime of the batteries was more than 18 hours. Next I write my sample distribution, which is critical because so many people forget to divide the standard deviation by the square root of the sample size. Next I need to work out my probability. So the observed value is 19.2 and I need to work out the probability that we have greater than 19.2. And it will be greater because the alternative hypothesis is greater. Simple. Next, I need to work out that probability and I get like 8.986%. Now that is greater than the significance level, which means that my observed value is likely to happen given the original setting. So I accept H0. I reject H1, there is no reason to believe that the, the mean has changed because the observed value is likely to happen using the old mean. So therefore we say there is not enough evidence to support the claim. Okay, next I've got another example and I'm just going to show you how similar it is, but there's a few differences here because the question asks for um, less than, you can see that in the question, so the alternative hypothesis we draw a less than sign and this time the probability of the observed value occurring is actually smaller than the significance level and therefore it is unlikely to happen using the old mean so we reject the old mean h0 and we accept that there's been a change and we say there is evidence to support the claim. Okay next we're going to look at correlation and in the first example Again, we start by writing out our hypotheses, and because we're testing for positive correlation here, I write that rho is greater than zero. I then go to my formula booklet, page 37, to find the critical value. I compare it against the modulus of the PMCC, and that way we don't get confused if we're looking for negative correlation. And we can see that the correlation that we've observed is greater than the critical value. And that means we reject H0 and we accept H1, there is correlation because the correlation we observed is greater than that critical value. And then we say there is enough evidence to suggest a positive correlation between Y and X. Tip number three, and we're talking Edexcel large data set. Now I have a fact sheet in my Google Drive which you can access, link in the description. I suggest that you read through it. I'm just gonna go over a few key points right now. There are eight different locations, five of them are in the UK, three of them are overseas. Australia is the only one which is in the Southern Hemisphere, so remember the season switch for that. And all the data is between May the 1st and October the 31st. Moving on to variables, there are 14 variables in the UK and there are five variables overseas. And you will need to know the units in which each variable is measured in. 
There are, other, some, there are some other nuances as well. For example, rainfall is the only one which has TR, which stands for trace. Some variables have NA, so non-available. And of those ones, they are all UK variables. None of the overseas ones have NA in it. And also you need to know which of them are continuous or which are discrete. So the discrete variables are cloud cover and cardinal directions. Have a look at the sheet. Try and understand as much as you can to get those two or three marks that you'll be asked. Tip number four, and that is knowing your calculator and being efficient with it. The two calculators that I recommend are the CG50 and the Casio ClassWiz. I have a video which I will link here that goes through all you need to know about using those two calculators for statistics and how you can become efficient and quick at getting the values which you're going to need to solve the questions in your statistics A level. Number five, and that is know your distributions and understand the notation. There's lots to remember for statistics. I've got a video where I've made a revision sheet which has everything which you need to know. You can watch that here. But for now, I'm gonna go over the five distributions that you need to know. Distribution number one, that's binomial. The way it's notated is B, open brackets, NP. N stands for the number of trials. P stands for the probability of success. Next one is the normal distribution, and that is notated N, open brackets, mu, sigma squared where mu is the mean and sigma is the standard deviation. Next one is the standardized normal or the Z distribution. And this is notated that it's a normal distribution, but the mean is zero and the standard deviation is one. And the formula that we need to know in order to convert between Z and X values is that Z is equal to X minus mu all over sigma. Next up, we have approximating with the normal and the distribution is that N open brackets, the mean is NP, and the variance is NP one minus P, where because we're approximating a binomial distribution, N is the number of trials and P is the probability of success again. And then finally, when we're doing a hypothesis test with a normal, we've already spoken about this, but it's so important that N is the sample size. So the new standard deviation is the old standard deviation divided by the square root of N. Tip number six, and that is draw a good force diagram. I always say, if it's tricky, draw picky. Here's an example. I'll need to label this diagram in order for me to answer the question effectively. I will start by looking at the two objects and drawing weight going directly downwards. Next, I would notice that the object A is on a slope, so therefore we could take components in parallel and perpendicular to the slope. I would then draw on the reactional force, and then I would draw the tension which will be going inwards towards the pulley, one for each object. And then I would read the question and I would figure out whether or not the object is going to be going down the slope or up the slope. In this case, it says it's going down, so I'll draw an acceleration line in purple here, and that tells me that object B will be going up and object A will be going down the slope. Next, I would look for the angle alpha. I would read the question and it will tell me that tan alpha is three over four, so I'll draw a quick right angle triangle and I would label the opposite three and the adjacent four. And then by Pythagoras, the hypotenuse is five. And that will tell me what cosine of alpha is equal to and it will tell me what sine of alpha is equal to. And I would use those values in the question. Now, these questions are quite formulaic. You're going to need to work out the tension and the acceleration. So what I would do is I would look at an equation of motion for each of the two objects. Now, the equation of motion for B would have tension going up in the positive direction following the direction of motion. And the equation of motion for A would have tension going against the motion, so therefore it would be negative. So once I have my two equations, I just add them together, the tensions will cancel, and I can work out what the acceleration is, and then you can sub back in to find the tension. Tip number seven, and that is moments, and how formulaic the questions can be. Have a look at this example. I've labeled my force diagram beautifully, as it's so important, as the last tip told us. And then I've got four questions to answer. The first question is a just a quick statement type question, but then the next three are so formulaic. Part B asks us to work out what T is, and you do that by first taking moments about the point which has the most unknown forces. So point A has two unknown forces, 
So if we take moments about that point, it will cancel them out completely, allowing us to work out what T is. And then part C, we resolve the forces going vertically. And part D, we resolve the forces going horizontally. And that's it. And you'll be so surprised how many of the moments questions just follow that pattern of taking moments and then resolving either horizontally or vertically and then resolving in the other direction. Tip number eight, and that is formula book page numbers. Make sure you know them. For Edexcel, there are only three which you need to know, page seven and page eight, which I've got on the screen now. And these show the uh, probabilities and some of the distributions and the dis, uh, standard deviation. And they also show uh, kinematics, the SUVAT equations. Now page 37 is the statistical table which you would need to do a hypothesis test for correlation. And there are so many statistical tables at the back of the formula book. I can't believe how many there are. So you don't be wasting time flipping around trying to find the one you need. Just go straight to page 37. That's where it is. Tip number nine, and that is using the correct form in your answers to make sure you get all of those accuracy marks. Big bombshell, apparently at Excel have a universal rule that answers must be given in terms of quantities which are given in the question. I found this in an examiner's report from 2019, and essentially it means that if the question gives you information in a particular form, then your answer must be in the same form. For example, the question that this report came from, it's a projectiles question, where it tells you that the balls are being projected with speed and at an angle. So when you are asked to work out the velocity, you can't give it as a component in terms of I and J, you must give it as a speed and a direction. And this also applies for vectors. So if the question has I's and J's, then you must give your position vectors and your velocities and your acceleration in terms of I and J as well. Tip number 10, and we are talking about timings and checking. NXL exams are two hours and you have to do 100 marks. So that works out at 1.2 minutes per mark. Make sure you stick to that. Try not to go over it and do leave a question and then come back to it if you find it too tricky and you're spending too much time on it. And finally, checking. There are so many little bits of detail in paper free questions. So do spend some time at the end of the exam checking to make sure that you have got the right details down. For example, significance levels. Most of the time they're 5%, but sometimes they might write 10%. And G, sometimes inexplicably, they ask you to use G is equal to 10. So do go over your work again and just check those little details. And that's it. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you found it useful. If you did, please do like, subscribe and share. Good luck in paper free. Bye for now.